Hey, what's going on guys? The NFL season is back and I'm extremely excited to try to revive this YouTube channel with the help of Joe Holka. If you guys don't know who Joe is, you'll see him in a second. I'll leave a link to his YouTube channel below as well. He's a really sharp uh, DFS mind, a good guy as well. So he's gonna give out his week one GPP picks and then I'm gonna follow it up with my own picks. If you guys do enjoy this video, do me a big favor, hit that thumbs up button and make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. Good to be back, let's get right into the picks. Thanks, Kev. Been following your work for a long time. Always looking to collaborate with smart people. And if any of you guys are looking for more DFS and betting content, definitely check out my channel as well. I'm sure Kevin will throw a link in the description here. But I also go live on Twitch every Sunday morning before kickoff, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Hope to see a couple of you there. I'm going to give you guys five GPP picks for week one on DraftKings. And the first player that I want to talk about is D.D. Westbrook. And I actually like this game in Jacksonville quite a bit, even though Kansas City does have one of the higher implied totals. The Jacksonville side is super interesting to me. Chiefs games last year, so games as a whole, actually averaged the league's third most combined snaps last year. And it wasn't really the Kansas City side of the ball that benefited from that because they were scoring so many points so efficiently that they actually didn't have to run a ton of plays. They're actually 23rd in most plays per game. If we're talking about Kansas City's opponents, they actually ran the second most plays per game last year. So I'm super interested in D.D. Westbrook. We know that there was a decent amount of chemistry that had been formed between Nick Foles and D.D. in the preseason this year. And I think it's a really nice price point for him in general at the 4,800 level. There's a couple guys in that range that we might talk about later, but I really like DD as kind of a leverage play, especially if people want to get on the KC side of the ball. I'm super interested in the game script because if Jacksonville can even keep this somewhat close, I think they might have to try and score some points through the air. Leonard Fournette is someone that we can talk about as well at the running back position with the same type of ownership discount that you might get on this side of the ball. But Didi in particular, I think is super interesting. So Westbrook is probably the best bet to see double digit targets in that price range. But if we go up a little bit more, you'll see my second GPP pick for you guys. And that's DJ Moore for the Carolina Panthers. I'm interested in DJ Moore in particular because of all the hype that has been surrounding Curtis Samuel in the off season. It's probably valid, but at the same time, the ownership difference between these guys could be extensive in week one. Obviously, Christian McCaffrey is going to carry ownership in any week, but I'm interested in DJ Moore. He's going to be stepping into a primary receiving role in 2019, and they do get this Rams defense that was in last season ranked in the bottom 10 in wide receiver fantasy points allowed per game. So one of the main reasons for those struggles was Marcus Peters. He ranked in the bottom 10 in both yards per target and fantasy points per target allowed last year. So Moore's going to spend most of his time against Peters in this game, and I think he's a really solid play in his price point. And I definitely think that if he ends up anywhere near like the 5 to 10% ownership range, you're doing your best to back into this game in a low kind of owned situation. And if the touchdowns happen to go your way, you're going to pass all those teams that ended up playing Curtis Samuel at a much higher ownership level. So I mentioned that the 49ers and Buccaneers game would be played at an extremely high pace. And on the other side of the ball, Tevin Coleman for the 49ers. I am interested in him for and GPPs in particular because they did come out and say that Matt Breda was the starter, the number one running back in this team. So I do think that he'll definitely carry more ownership than Coleman. But Coleman was getting most of the offseason work as the primary back. So it's one of those situations this is probably a true timeshare. But we can project Coleman and Breda for somewhat similar workload though different and there might be enough to go around for both of them in this game except for the difference is you're going to get a significant discount and from an ownership perspective in tournaments on Coleman versus Breda. The next GPP pick I have for you guys is at the quarterback position and I'm going to go with Lamar Jackson for the Baltimore Ravens. It's a fantastic matchup against this Miami Dolphins team who actually really struggled to defend running quarterbacks last year. They allowed the highest and the fifth highest single game rushing yard total of the entire season top 10 in fantasy points allowed to quarterbacks. This gets a really strong spot. It might actually be too strong in some ways, and I think that might lower his ownership a little bit because people think that they're going to just run away with this game, and then they're just not going to have to do much after that. But I still expect Lamar to get anywhere from 8 to 12 carries on the ground, and that's just a floor and ceiling that you don't get from a lot of other quarterbacks. Now, I definitely think you can run Lamar Jackson out naked without a stack, but if I am going to pair him with someone, I actually want to use it to pay down at the tight end position with Mark Andrews. So last season, Andrews was third among tight ends in target depth, 
And like the Bills, the Ravens don't actually ask their mobile quarterback to throw often, but Greg Roman has favored the deep ball more than most coaches. So Roman's uh, a coordinator that actually oversaw Colin Kaepernick, and we know his favorite target was Vernon Davis. So it makes a lot of sense that Jackson and Andrews could, could be actually a pretty similarly successful tandem this year. So I'm interested in Andrews given his price. So just a little bonus stack for you the guys if you do decide to run a pair with Lamar Jackson teams. The last GPP pick I have for you guys this week is at the tight end position. I'm going to go with OJ Howard and Tampa Bay. We know that this is an extremely nice game environment as far as pace is concerned, but also it is one of the highest team totals on the entire slate as well. And at the tight end position, we really want to try and target these high team totals because touchdowns are going to be so important at a position where you're not going to get near as much volume, not near as many targets. But in tournaments specifically, I definitely expect Chris Godwin to be one of the highest owned wide receivers on the entire slate. And Mike Evans won't be far behind him with all these Jameis Winston stacks. So I'm interested in Howard and GPPs as some sort of a pivot there. I'd be shocked if he approached anything close to 15% ownership. And he's a talented guy. I know that he didn't do a ton in the preseason, but he was running a ton of routes. He played every single snap that Jameis Winston played as well. And those are high equity targets that he's going to get close to the goal line. So if he happens to come down with the touchdowns instead of someone like Godwin or Evans, you're going to do your part to pass all of those teams in tournaments. So I think he's a great direction to go in tournaments for the tight end position this week. Thanks for having me again, Kev. It's going to be fun to do these videos with you all season long and kind of do a little bit of a YouTube collaboration here. But if any of you guys are looking for some more DFS content, definitely check out my channel. And I hope to see you guys on Sunday mornings on Twitch, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Don't miss that. And if you're looking for any of my other content, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, just search Joe Holka and you'll definitely find me. We'll see you guys in week two. All right, Joe, thanks for those picks. Uh, moving on to my NFL week one DFS picks. So I've got the DraftKings pricing here, but I do like both these players for FanDuel as well. And I've only got two players this week because I haven't really made my main lineup, uh, but I know these two players are gonna be in it. Hopefully in future weeks, I will have more players locked in so I can give out some more picks. But uh, we've got two solid picks in my opinion here uh, for GPPs. And I wouldn't mind um, I wouldn't mind Freeman in cash. I don't know if I'd go Lockett in cash, but definitely my two uh, top GPP picks here. Tyler Lockett, uh, $6,000 this week. The Seahawks are at home versus the Bengals as 10-point favorites. Pretty high implied team total as well, so they're expected to score some points, and I wouldn't be surprised if Tyler Lockett got in on it. He's now the number one receiver in Seattle with Doug Baldwin retired, and there's not much behind him either. And with a good quarterback and Russell Wilson, I expect him to have a pretty big game here in week one. Last year, he averaged 15 DraftKings points over his last nine games, and I would expect at least 15 DraftKings points this week in week one. So Tyler Lockett is going to be definitely locked in my uh, one of my receiver spots here on DraftKings this week. Next up, we got running back Devontae Freeman, 5,300 this week on DraftKings. The Falcons are in a pretty tough matchup here. They're on the road against the Vikings, who are supposed to have a pretty good defense, um, but we've got an implied team total at 21.8. So they are expected to score some points. And with Tevin Coleman gone, uh, Freeman should get a lot of work. The only worry here is he is coming off of a season where he missed pretty much the whole season uh, with injuries, uh, but he's looked good in camp apparently, doing a lot of uh, hard running sharp, I think they were calling them vicious cuts. So apparently he looks ready to go. I wouldn't be surprised if they eased him in just a little bit and that's kind of reflected in the pricing, but um, I still expect him to get a lot of touches here in week one and he's a pretty dynamic uh, explosive back that can have a big game. He's got some big upside uh, playing in a dome here in Minnesota on a high powered offense. So I really like him at 5,300. Uh, these are the two players that I really like this week. So I'm going to give just those two players as my NFL week one DFS picks. Hopefully you guys enjoyed these videos or this video. Hopefully these two guys pan out for us and Joe's picks do well as well. And hopefully one of you guys wins that million dollars. As always, make sure you click that thumbs up button. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and good luck this week, guys.